Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and this video is sort of like an add-on to a video I made earlier about negative after images. So in that video, I talked about how if we look at one color for a long time and then look at the color white, we then see that first color is complementary color. This happens because we process colors in pairs, and when the neurons from one half get tired of seeing that one color, the other half kind of takes over. That's not incorrect, but it is an oversimplification, and I want to take this opportunity to explain it to you. So yes, colors are processed in pairs, but they're not just any two colors that make white. Specifically, there are three pairs in which colors are processed. There's black and white, blue and yellow, and red and green. Processing color in these opposing pairs is called opponent process theory. It's called that because when you see a color, not only are the neurons that respond to that color excited, but the opposing neurons in the pair are inhibited. And if you think about it, this makes sense. Blue and yellow, for example, are an opposing pair, and when you combine the two, you don't get bluish yellow because they actively inhibit each other. You get a totally new color, white. So when I was first researching this, I was confused because black and white combine to make white, blue and yellow combine to make white, Red and green don't. My initial understanding of opponent process was if you stared at one of the pair colors for too long, you would get its complementary color upon viewing white. But when you look at red for a while, you don't get green, you get cyan. And when you look at green for a while, you don't get red, you get magenta. I was confused by this, I was trying to do a lot of research to finally nail this down and understand what was going on, and it was not helping me that the best sources I could find were either unclear or wrong. For example, Wikipedia talks about Ewald Herring, one of the psychologists who helped solidify the opponent process theory. It and a bunch of other sources talk about how there are three opponent channels, red and green, blue and yellow, and black and white. Responses to one color of an opponent channel are antagonistic to those of the other color, therefore a green image will produce a magenta after image. If they're antagonistic towards one another, how would green produce magenta? Wouldn't it produce red, the color in its opposing channel? Similarly, a psychology textbook I was checking was just flat out wrong because it showed a picture of an inverted American flag, except it wasn't perfectly inverted because it had green stripes instead of cyan, which is the complement of red, and it said, if you see green for a while, you will then see red. And that's not true, you'll see magenta. I tried accessing some of the original papers written on this by Ewald Herring and people like that, and I didn't find them, so... I did the best I could with... Ugh, words! Basically, I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out, and I finally got to something that I think is the right answer, but I could be wrong, and if I am, please correct me, I'd love to know the answer. But like I said before, I'm pretty sure I'm correct now, and I'm gonna show you this on a pen and paper, because it's easy to illustrate there. I'm gonna be all Vihard up in this piece. Okay, so white is the combination of red, green, and blue, right? All the colors we're going to look at with opponent process theory and color inversion can be created with red, green, and blue. The same way that you might use sine, tangent, and cosine to do a proof of something. And if you don't know what those are yet, don't worry about it, keep living the good life. Okay, now let's say we fatigued blue. When we then look at white, blue is going to be fatigued, which means because of opponent process theory, we'll see yellow, which is in fact red and green. Red stays red, green stays green, because those colors weren't fatigued. So we ultimately see red and green, which makes yellow. So again, blue goes to yellow, but why doesn't red go to its opponent pair green? Well, if we fatigue red, red goes to its opponent pair green, but that's not the only thing we see when we look at white. We see blue and green, which makes cyan. And it doesn't matter that there were two greens and one blue in that, because you can't have a greener green. Adding another doesn't do anything. We already got blue and red, so let's do green and yellow. Blue stays blue, red goes to green because that's its opponent pair, and green goes to red. Now blue, green, and red is white, but remember, green is fatigued, and so is red, leaving us just with blue. And I'm just gonna do the rest really quickly for you. So with green, green's fatigued, goes to red, red is red, blue is blue, magenta. And I'll just quickly go over cyan and magenta here. You already have a general understanding of how this proof will work, but if you wanna see it in more detail, you can just pause the video. So to sum all of this up, when you fatigue a color, you will see its opposing pair because the fatigued color can't get as excited and gets more inhibited by the opposing color. But even though that opposing color is dominating the pair, because white is red, green, and blue, you don't necessarily see that color. Basically, the easiest way to think about this is if you take two colors that together make white and fatigue one of them, then you're going to see the other one. I showed you the proof of how to do it with primary and secondary colors, but something I have to stress is that I don't know if that's 100% correct. Like I said earlier, a lot of research I found was incomplete or just flat out wrong, so what I just showed you makes a lot of sense to me, and I think, I really think it's right, but I don't know for 100% that it is. So, sorry, please correct me if you know the answer. Uh, that'd be awesome. I'd love to learn this. That is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I do have a lot of exciting things coming up on this channel, and I feel like I say that a lot, so I guess you can take my word for it or not, but I really um, am gonna have the time to do some cool things over winter break with some friends on YouTube and just topics I want to explore, so stick around. Thanks.